I can see it here from my end too. I think we're good. All right, hey you guys. <laughs> We have some uh, some technical difficulty this morning. We have so, you know specialized software that we use, and it chose today to crash. And so you don't get all our cool intro music. And I'm not broadcasting through my Canon 5D Mark III. It's it's a webcam, so it's a little little critter. But we're here. Jared's here, and we're going to you know go over your guys' photographs just like always. So hey, give us a shout out where you are. That would be really cool to always, we love seeing you guys and hearing from you. So give us a shout out in the chat, okay? And um, we will be covering your photographs here in a minute. So first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. You don't know who I am. I'm Mark Silver. I'm an author. There they are. Books, photographer, etc. Educator in Carmel, California. And our show is brought to you by our friends at Photolab. So if you have heard anything I've ever said, you got to know that I want you to make prints so important. And Bay Photolab is a great resource for you and used by some of the best photographers in the world. Our friend Bob Holmes, uh, uh, Scott Kelby and Bambi Cantrell, just to name a couple. So you've got some special here, the Fine Art Canvas Wraps, 25% off. Let's see what else we got there, Jared. 40% uh, off on large size photographic prints. That's pretty cool. You can get some big prints made, say 40%. Consider doing that and then... Always, as always, you'll get 25% off on your first order. So when we're done with the show, head on over to Bay Photo Lab and order something. Put it on your wall. It's really important. You know, your best exhibit is your own workspace or your home. Always make sure that you're really exhibiting your work in a beautiful environment with frames and mats. And Bay Photo will do that for you, too. Okay. Well, Jared, we've kind of had to use duct tape and bailing wire. <laughs> yes, we have. And, uh, uh, but we do have a show for people today. Uh, Even so, though there's duct tape, it still works. Yeah. And if you want to submit your photos still, you still can. Um, all you need to do is uh, look in the description of this live stream. And there's a link to the AYP club. Uh, ask to join the AYP club. I'll approve you. And then you can submit your photos. Uh, cool. That simple. So we have here, I'm just looking at who's joining us here. Um, JM is from Nigeria. Wow. Oh, no, I'm Niagara Falls, boy. <laughs> it's... it's <laughs> That makes more sense. Hey, in Niagara Falls, great to have you with us. And in the audio is good. That's great because awesome. we are we're kind of, I guess I say we've sort of put chewing gum together and wired this thing. So I'm glad it's working. Ah, okay. So, Jared, should we dive in? Yeah, let's go I ahead. So we got here. our first image here. So this is from Susie, and a real great story with it. Uh, it is uh, my Rembrandt cat, Spanky, uh, uh -huh. which I think we've seen a photo of before uh, in the garden. Um, right. And so this was taken in Athens, Ohio. Uh, one of my personal ongoing projects for 2022 is to continue using my rescued animals as models in an artistic way to encourage adoption at local shelters. Excellent. I love the fact that you are using your photography as a means to further your mission, which is awesome, and we should all be thinking along those lines. So beautiful portrait of the cat, and I love the, I can't really tell, you know, I, granted I'm looking at this through a couple of layers here of, of stuff, technology, but I can't really tell what the background is. I mean, it's, it's an interesting. It's abstract. Um, yeah. It's an interesting background that doesn't compete with the cat. Um, and I love the way the cat is just looking right at you. Beautiful, you know, I guess you would call that a mane or a, 
uh, you know, I think there's a better technical term for that, but, and it's just trusting you is what I get from this image. You know, it's just there, you're, you're obviously a trusted companion and a friend and it's seeing you and looking at you and we're getting that as viewers. So, you know, good job of capturing the, the, the kind of the, quality of the cat and again against this background and the fact that you're using it to further your your mission is great speaking of animals <laughs> river uh i don't know if you guys can see her here out my window hey river uh, she's kind of doing her own thing there but um A dog doing she's her own thing. she's <laughs> She is hunting around outside. So there's there's another dog. And hey, listen, I'm a big believer in letting your animals be your models. They're wonderful. I I do that all the time. So good job. All right. Uh, this next one I wanted to do. I went ahead and um, I'm bringing up their post because they had a couple different ones. So this is Joseph. Um, so a few photos in my first foray into the world of documentary photography. These are photos of a protest against animal captivity at Marine Land in 2019. I was hired by a documentary uh, producer director to capture some stills of the protest. It was an incredible wow. experience to be part of such a project. My aim was to contrast the energy and tension in such an environment, that fine line between demonstrating and maintaining order. So we'll go through. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, okay. <clears throat> I, yeah. I just want to go through them quick. And yeah. Go back. So yeah, back to the first one. Yeah. Let's, let's go through that. I mean, that's a cool photograph. I love the balance between the two subjects there and the tree kind of a, somewhat in the, not really balanced in the middle, but, um, that has an interesting look, especially because the, the policeman is looking over at the protester and black and white makes it even more, you know, emphatic. Let's see what else. Let's see the other ones. Okay, cool. I like that one a lot too. And, the last and that, one. Oh, did you want to go back to the other one? Yeah, no, that's good. Well, good. Good job. Good on getting this assignment. I mean, I'd be curious to, to hear how you got it. I think choosing black and white is is uh, a good choice. It just, you know, there's that timelessness of black and white. So this could be today. This could be 20 years ago. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it kind of floats in time. Chris Burkhardt made that point about a good photograph could be a sort of in an any time almost. And so you've done that with, with your black and white processing. I like the way on this one that, you've used the frame, you know, you've got a, uh, this is actually uh, in my book as a cross frame uh, composition. Yeah. You have the, you have the vertical line and then you have the horizontal line of the uh, porpoise dolphin. So it's a, you know, it works. These tools of composition are sometimes hard to explain. Why do they even work? They've been used for, centuries by painters before photography and we can use them as photographers so they just work um why you know you could we could speculate well it's it's really because i think it just draws your eye and it's you know you have a horizontal line a vertical line intersecting pretty much where the subject is where the boy is and that's that's it's a, you know, it's basically leading lines in a different usage. So I like this one the best. To me, this is the most interesting of all. The frame is filled, and, you know, we can see what's going on. We can see the protest, and it's a very interesting photograph. So good job. Yeah, excellent work. Um, and I don't remember, uh, uh, but Susie commented, said that the texture was added in Photoshop. Oh, I see. Okay. I, you know, I'd almost like to see what it looked like without that. I, th th that would be my only comment. I think the texture almost competes too much with 
you know, the beauty of the uh, the cat. I don't I almost like to see it with a white background, just nothing, because then it would, you know, I think it would give the cat a little more front and center. You might try that since you did it in Photoshop. Maybe you just put a white background, see what happens. And you could post that in uh, the AYP club. Yep. All right. This is from our friend Christopher. Um, a sea lion taking a nap on a park bench on the island of Santa Cruz in the Galapagos. Now, it's always interesting to me how you guys must get together and say, okay. I know, that's what I thought. <laughs> We're going to do animals today, and so make sure that's all you show us. I, I don't know how you guys do this kind of a mystical thing, but so far we're in the animal theme. Um, it's an interesting photograph. I would, my only thing is I'd rather, I'd like to kind of see the length of the, of the body, maybe pull back a little bit. I mean, it's got an interesting expression. Something makes me want to see the rest of it and also see the rest of the bench, which is giving us some, some cool diagonal lines. So I would just say pull back a little bit, you know, ideally with your feet, but you know, give us a longer view because there's something about that uh, sea lion that would be interesting to see the rest. I would also minimize the person behind the feet there, and you can do that in your post-processing. If you guys are using the latest version of Lightroom, you can, you know, you've got some pretty cool features with your masking, and you can mask the background really easily. And I would blur, it's blurred out already, but I would probably reduce the exposure, make it a little darker so it's not, it's pulling my eye a little bit. I'd get rid of that, you know, just darken it. But those would be my two things, Christopher. I, I think it's, it's an interesting study of the sea lion. I'd like to just see more of its length. And uh, I don't know, the biggest question I have when I see it is, how in the world did it get up on that bench? Well, they're pretty good at doing that. You know, they they have this sort of ability to sort of almost be like rubber. You know, they get up on things. Yeah, and they <clears throat> they use their flippers and kind of mold themselves up on objects. It's kind of interesting. interesting. Yeah, they like to do that. They definitely like to do that. I've seen them get up on all sorts of funny things. Uh, well, here is our next one. We are leaving the animal theme. Uh, uh -oh. This is from Lucian. So this is the bridge to Elian Donner Castle in Scotland. Uh huh. Yeah, it's very interesting, and you've got the little punctuation point there with the flag. Yeah, there it is. That works. That definitely works to add that punctuation point. We've got, you know, a number of elements of composition. We've got geometry with the arcs, arches, and really kind of a oval shape if you really look at the you know the reflection in the water and the shading it's interesting because of that and that works really well um it what i would find it even you know more interesting is maybe somebody driving across uh or walking or riding a bike could add another element to this so you know you've heard me say this before sometimes you have a really perfect setting you're set the table is set, maybe just wait a minute, a motorcycle comes by, or a bicycle, a dog runs by, or a horse, or a car. A car in motion might be really interesting, too, a long exposure there. That'd be my only kind of how you could add that extra element of life to the photograph, life in motion. Um, but it's a beautiful still life. You know, it's very much a painting. Uh, it's in balance. Um, you know, the flag sort of throws off the balance, which is not a bad thing because you have patterns when you break a pattern because we have a very, you know, with the three arches, we have a pattern and the pattern of the bridge itself. And then the flagpole is disrupting that, which is also interesting as a composition tool. But again, maybe you could have, you know, hung around and, seeing if somebody would drive across or you could even stage it yourself. 
by having a friend walk across. <laughs> you can do these things if you want. I mean, you're not doing a documentary photo photograph here. You're taking a still life. Anyway, those are my comments. All right. Our next one. This was actually sent to us, and they're looking for a little bit of advice for a particular kind of photography. So this is from Maria. I'm struggling okay. with the long exposure, especially at sunset when there's limited time to capture the magic. I took this using a Sigma uh, 16 millimeter f 1.4 uh, DC DN contemporary lens with a six stop breakthrough ND filter. Yeah. The settings were f 16 ISO 100 and 10 second exposure. I'm going back to the spot in Hawaii later this year, and I would love any advice on how to improve a shot like this. Thank you. You know, I think you've done a really good job of capturing the, you know, the ND filter lets you blur the water, which is, you know, always a good look. That works. Um, timing, you know, the only thing you could do to improve upon it is perhaps wait a little longer for the sun to kind of burst through that little looks like if it goes a little bit lower we're going to start to see a more prominent sun that might be the only thing i would suggest and you might you know you might pull the shadows a little bit up so we can see a little bit more of the detail the the rock i i don't know these are cho these are choices you make in your in your post production you there's no rule here. You just use your sliders until it looks right to you. I might bring up the I might bring up the uh, shadows a little bit in that case, and then maybe bring the highlight. Well, yeah, again, bringing the highlights down. You've already got the clouds pretty accentu accentuated. I that would be my only my only point is just you're set up with your tripod. Maybe as that sun was coming down, perhaps even before it would be it hit that spot in the little section of the clouds there above it um maybe you could just point to that jared just oh. above where the sun is now there's a yeah there's an opening could be there and it could be a little bit below it it's what, kind of what i commented on a moment ago when you're doing this kind of photograph this isn't street photography where you just have to capture the moment you've got time You've got the element of time. So just, you know, hang out, take a lot of different images until you you get just what you want. And if you could get that sun punching through, it would make it a little more dramatic. So there's my only comment. Try that next time you go to photograph. You know, you've got, uh, you write, the light is going away quickly, but you've got 15 minutes probably as it's going down there. 10 minutes, five, I don't know. You've got some time. And uh, let, let it punch through and see if you can get that kind of ray of light. And there is River. Okay, cool. Try it out. See what happens. All right. This next one is from our friend Gear. Uh, woman dreaming in the mirror from a retro city, Melakia, Melaka, in Thailand, made to look like Thailand in 1905. Uh -huh. It is lit by a small window taken with an Olympus OMD uh, with e EM52. Very interesting photograph. This is a very clever photograph with using the mirrors. And, you know, we don't see her face full, you know, straight on. We see it through the mirror, which is very interesting. Yeah. We've got three different views of her face. I think it's a really clever photograph. And uh, I'd be curious to know if you just happened upon her or did you set it up this way? Um, one small point, I would get rid of that window. It just pulls my eye a little bit, doesn't serve any purpose. You can mask that out and darken it. <clears throat> you can get rid of it completely if you want, do some processing on it. Um, you know, you always want to look at your photograph and see where your eye gets pulled to. And if it's being pulled off of the main subject, you know, 
you've got post-processing to deal with that. You can certainly get rid of it. In the darkroom days, we would burn that in, meaning make it darker. Um, also on the upper left, there's a tiny little corner there. Yeah, I'd get rid of that also because, again, where does your eye go? You know, you want it to go to the subject. And anything that is going to pull it anywhere other than the subject, you want to you want to fix that. And I would darken the edges and for the same reason. Keep the viewer's eye inside the frame. Th that's relatively small compared to the fact that you you really did capture a beautiful photograph. And you've done a good job with that. So you're you're using your visualization. I imagine you did visualize this. And that's great. So bravo. And just maybe make a few of those tweaks, put it put it back in the AYP club. By the way, that's true for all you guys. If you if you think what I said makes sense at all, go ahead and and if you can make those changes, make them, put it back in again, and let's see what happens. Let's see if it resonates. Okay. All right. This next one is from our friend Mache uh, over in Poland, and uh, we've got two different ones. Uh, so here's one of them, and then here's the second photo. So um, Mache said, uh, "Morning light. I just wanted to capture something, and my dog was around." I do that all the time. You know, they're they're really great, not just great companions, but they're they're really good models. I find I use animals a lot, horses, deer, sheep, um, goats. They know that you're photographing them. I think it's really interesting. Let's see the one on the left. There's something that's drawing me to that one. Can you enlarge that at all? Okay. You know, there's something I really like about this photograph. I like the expression and the light is coming right onto its coat there. It's a beautiful photograph. And, you know, you've done a good job with your shallow depth of field, so we're not really distracted by anything in the background particularly. Um, it's just kind of texture. Let's see the other one now. Yeah, the, that one I just saw just seems more interesting to me. Um, that's the expression. Bambi Cantrell talks about it. Expression is really what you're after. You're looking for that expression. And I think you captured it in the first one. It just seems more interesting to me. Go back to that one, Jaron. Let's just see. I mean, this is a, yeah. It's just like, I feel like the animals, like the dog is, taking something in you know and i love the way the light is hitting its fur that's a beautiful photograph good job what do you guys think by the way i'd love to hear your feedback on these things is i'm not the only person here who can give feedback so i'd be great if you guys just jump jump in on every one of these give your own what do you see you know what's your what's your sense when you view it this is really helpful uh, to the photographers to not just hear from me, but to hear from other viewers, because really what, you know, you're showing your work, you want to see what resonates and what doesn't and what questions people have or suggestions. You don't have to do anything with those. I learned this in art school, you know, we used to get critiqued and I didn't always agree with the instructor, but it, it doesn't hurt to hear their, any, even if it's harsh criticism, you need to get over that. And just, you know, stick to your guns. If you think it's right, just stick with it. But, yeah, please put your comments in here. I want to I want to see what you have to say. All right. Here's one from Margie. Uh, so Margie said, and I've got two here. Oh, I haven't zoomed in. Um, so Margie said, I love playing with texture. This is a Snapseed edit on the phone. Um, I really love a lot of the old masters looking forward to seeing a Turner exhibition in Dublin soon for more inspiration so this is the photo after adding like the texture and stuff on it and this is the original photo uh huh so. okay hey, let's go back here yeah it's interesting um, I almost like the original better though I would 
I would personally just process. Let's go back to the original. <clears throat> I would just work with this one because I feel like it's more... You know, it's the scene that you actually photographed. Yeah, you. I mean, you're doing a kind of a, a texture thing, which is interesting. But I find this photograph is actually more interesting to me. And you can do a lot of things in your processing to bring out the clouds, darken the blue in the sky, level it. You know, those are just processing things you do in, in your software or Lightroom or whatever you're using. Um the smoothness of the water. I find this more of an interesting photograph, frankly. It's very much like a painting already. I don't think you need to do anything as drastic as you did in the other one. Let's go back to the other one for a sec. I mean, I, I, I do find it interesting, but I'm, yeah, I, I feel like I'm losing too much out of it. And the other one to me just is a very nice, still, you know, basically a landscape. That's my my critique. I would I would just work on the processing on your original image, keep it true to what you saw at the time, or as more true, let's say. But good on experimenting. I mean, look, you got to experiment to see how things turn out. I'm reading um, Paul McCartney's two two volume the lyrics i'm almost done with volume one and he talks about the stories behind different songs and for you know it's one thing you just find about the beatles they were constantly experimenting constantly experimenting not one of the reasons they stopped doing live shows is they weren't experimenting they're just playing and everybody's screaming and they got tired of that um so they went from touring to studio work and they just just tried stuff out and um paul and john would like bounce the songs off of each other which is cool you know if you ever can find a creative partner that you can do this with super helpful what do you think about this you know what do you think about this one what do you think about that one somebody you really trust that can give you good advice you know, very different than a critique. It's somebody that actually works with you and collaborates. So good on testing stuff out. Bravo. And, you know, keep doing that. Yeah. We had a interesting comment from David. Um, he had another suggestion of rather than just darkening this window in this photo. Mm -hmm. um, he suggested what if you also tried just giving it a little bit more color, like the green here so we've got like this greenish color here and that would like both darken it but add a little bit of something to it as well yeah you could do that I, i'm a little i would just be simpler to just darken it but you know might you might try that um sure but the same point is like let's let's not have our eye pulled away because of something bright there but but you know try it out this is from Paul, and this was taken in Whitby, England. Aha. Uh -huh. The sepia really is cool. It's a very old-timey feel to this, going back to that point of, you know, a timelessness to your photographs. And you burn the edges there. Actually, I think that's in your lens, perhaps. Yeah, the vignetting there. Could be from your lens, lens cap, your lens hood. Um, or it could be done purposefully within the software or the lens itself. Anyway, that's an interesting view. Um, I'll make the same comment as I made on the bridge and one of the earlier ones. It might be interesting to see a person walk into the frame. Could be you. Don't be afraid to put it on a tripod and walk into the frame yourself. Like if if you were to walk in front of those uh, those grave markers right there, yeah, that little patch there, that could be very interesting walking into the frame or or from the other side. Try this stuff out, you guys. I mean, just test it out cuz it's kind of fun. You just put it on a tripod and just 
walk into the frame yourself. Or if you have a friend there with you, have them do it. That's even easier. Uh, Mads Peterson Iverson, if I'm saying his name correctly. Yeah. yeah. Talked about that. And, you know, he would use his girlfriend to walk in or be, a, you know, a person in the frame or oftentimes he would do it himself. It does add that element and there's nothing like adding a, the element of a live person or or animal to your photography. I think it will help you. Anyway, that's another suggestion. Try it out. I just noticed, um, I think I got a comment from somebody that they're not able to hear me. Uh -oh. So maybe if you want to make sure if people can hear me when I'm talking. Can you guys hear Jared? Somebody's not hearing him? It would certainly be nice, otherwise I'll just have to put I can hear you, Jared. No, I haven't recorded, but, so. <laughs> yeah, but, but we're going through a different platform anyway. If you guys can't, put a note in there, a uh, comment if you can hear Jared. Yeah, thank you. Or how about just a thumbs up? Yeah. Um, um, anyways, I guess we'll continue on. We've got another one um, here with, uh, let's see. Got to find my place again. Uh, so this is from Amir. I'm not drinking beer, by the way. This is water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, I, I like... hear other people are saying they can. So maybe it was just a temporary thing. Okay, good. Um, anyways, uh, so this is um, from Amir, Manhattan. View from uh, Hoboken. Hoboken. Uh, so this is composite sky from a sunrise over the Indian Ocean. Uh -huh. I remember seeing this on the AYP Club. Yeah. Yeah, and then reflections added in post processing, um, black and white conversion in Photoshop. This is probably more digital art than pure photography. Would you be interested in hearing your views? You know, I you could have fooled me. I mean, those clouds are. Uh, definitely, uh, I don't know. Could they be in Manhattan? Maybe. Uh, I love the I love the reflection on the the water and the smooth water. My only comment really is just your processing in black and white. I wouldn't do it with Photoshop. I would process this with, and you guys know I really like Silver Effects Pro because you can make this stronger image by increasing the dynamic range, and that's really you know. The goal for me of a black and white photograph is a as wide a dynamic range as I can get. I learned that from Ansel Adams with the zone system, and Silver Effects Pro actually has the zone system built into it. Excuse me, you can get some deeper blacks and some more whites. It'll make this punch, you know, just punch up the image. So... You would have to, after you've done your compositing, take it from there into Silver Effects Pro, which you can do. I mean, that's the cool thing about the software. And then go ahead and do the rest of your black and white processing in there. Try that out. You can download it for free and get a 30-day trial. So just take this, process it in Silver Effects Pro. You can find the, the preset. There's like 48 of them, I think. You can find the ones that resonate the most for you, test them out, look at each one, and then you can also add a film to it, which I do both. And I find myself often using Panatomic X because it was a film that I shot with a lot. Um, it's a cool, very... Uh, l l low grain, but it, it, it has, to me, and it, again, helps bring out that dy dynamic range. And if you go in there, you can see where you are in the zone system, and you can see which zones you need to enhance. So there, try that out. Put it on um, put it on AYP Club. I don't mind that you're compositing and you're doing these things. I mean, that's it is an art form. You can do these things. So, you know, give that a whirl and see what happens. All right. I made a couple of adjustments to the balance, so hopefully that helps uh, with the audio. In the meantime, mm -hmm. we've got a photo from Alicia, and our friend in Alberta. 
and uh, she submitted this one. I love this photo because she didn't know I was there taking photos. It's a beautiful picture of my sister and my horse. Oh, yes. Well, you've got the life forms there and the people and the, the person and the horse together are, you know, th there's this lovingness that you can see both in the girl's expression and the horse kind of going back and forth with each other, which is cool. Um, my only pointers on this would be to take that white in the background and reduce it. Yeah. Just reduce it, and especially in the edges. You do you did burn the edges a little bit. I would just do that a little bit more uh, on all all four corners and on the edges. Just again to keep our um, you know viewer in the in the frame. Uh, you use the new masking feature. I'm gonna I'm making a new course by the way. It's gonna I've got to just sit down and do it. Uh, Lightroom course where I'm going to be going over these <clears throat> masking tools, but it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, you just mask the subject and then you can invert it and take the background and do whatever you want with it. And you can mask, you, you can change the subject or the background. You can make two different masks. Or, and it gives us just great tools because Prior to that, you have to do some pretty tedious masking, and it's really hard to get hair right. Um, and the masking, it's got you know artificial intelligence and machine learning, so it does a, it's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. So I would just try that. Just bring that background down a little bit. But you've done a really good job at just, as you said, capturing a... a impromptu candid photograph and my comments are strictly about the post-processing so try those things out and let us see it on the AYP club all right uh, our next thing is we're gonna take a step back uh, so Chris uh, Christopher who had the picture of the sea lion went looking through the photos that he had from that session and he found one uh, that he wanted us to take a look at. Uh, uh -huh. so I see, you adjusted through... right on the yeah, spot. Yeah, he found a photo with more of the sea lion curved along the bench as if he's stretching and sans yeah. uh, person in the back. So no person in the background either. That's right. Uh, see, I really think that that brings out you know, the, the image a lot more because we're also looking at those diagonal lines we still got the expression of the seal, but we're seeing his whole torso and his whole body. And the person out of the background helps just to me, yeah. I would Here's the yeah, original photo work. that we previously had. Yeah. I no, the other one, I would just process it a little bit more. You know, you've got some tweaking you can do, but let's go back to the new one. Yeah, just in your processing, bring out the color like you did on the first one. <clears throat> Maybe get rid of you know some of that stuff in the background. Just let it fade out, um, not fade out, but darken a little bit. But you you know I I personally like this one better. What do you guys think? So cool. And I see a comment there. If you, Jared, if you see any comments, maybe you oh, just yeah. I've been trying to look back and them. forth, so I bring them up when I see them. Yeah. So we have time for a couple more. Yep. Uh, Looks like some of you guys are joining in right now, which is cool. Thanks for joining us. You know what we didn't do? Oh, we yeah, because we don't have our little video. We don't have our little thing, but just remind you guys to, you know, if you like the broadcast, give us a thumbs up. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button and enable the bell so you don't miss our future shows because it'll tell you that we're going to be broadcasting. So that's always helpful. All right. And then next, this is from our friend Christy. This is Oscar assisting me with black and white skills. Yeah. What is that bar there? Is that I a... think this is like a table or a chair. So it's a piece of furniture. Yeah. And yeah. they're kind of cool. have their head over Yeah. There. Yeah, very, very interesting is a black and white. And... Uh, you know, the fact the cat is just looking right at you. 
you've got its whiskers pretty much inside the frame. And uh, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good portrait. Burn the right edge a little bit. Yeah, just the very bottom right corner. Just burn that out a little bit. Again, just keeping your subject, your viewer's eye completely in the frame. And any of those little bright spots, you might want to just burn those too. This, again, is something we would do in the darkroom, you know, to keep post-processing or darkroom work. And that's all we're doing with our software is we're, you know, we're just trying to make sure that we've got everybody's eye staying within the frame. Mm -hmm. I'd probably bring the highlights down just a little bit. The whites seem almost blown out. Yeah. Not, yeah, just bring that down a little bit, adjust that. Uh, These are just tiny little post-processing points. Yeah. So maybe a couple yeah. more. We've got uh, time. This one is from David Elliott, Autumn Leaf. Uh -huh. Floating or something. How is that happening? Kind of cool. Um, well, based on my earlier comments, you probably know what I'm going to say. The white is pulling my eye away from the leaf, so you tone that down. Just tone it down. Go to your Photoshop Camera Raw or Lightroom, and I imagine other. I don't know, you know. I know that Adobe is just working on this constantly, but um, just pull the brightness down because you can see. I mean, the leaf is front and center in the picture, but then immediately my eye gets pulled to the all that white space. So just tone it down, and then I I think that would help. But it's an interesting photograph because it's floating. I'm thinking, uh, and not to be somebody to ruin the magic, I'm guessing the stem is maybe long mm -hmm. enough, and they're like just holding it there. Could be, um, yeah. I was, which that's kind of what I good think. Good use of resources. Yeah, but it's interesting. The floatingness makes it an interesting photograph. Try those processing points and see what happens. All right, uh, I think we got one more. We're going to do another one from uh, Mache. I don't think that we did this one last time, but if I did, let me know, and I'll grab another one. But it's uh, Day at the Beach in the Baltic Sea. Oh, my computer thinks I have too many photos open now. I don't believe we did this one last time we did a show. I don't I don't remember seeing yeah. it. Yeah, interesting. Um this group of uh sandpipers. I'm I'm not sure what they are, but and this is in the Baltic Sea, is yep, that what you the said? Baltic Sea. Interesting. Yeah. I'm just, you know, kind of looking at it. I I obviously the center of attention is this one in the foreground. I might suggests that you accentuate that one bird by adjusting in the, your post-processing blur out the other ones and just let that one kind of pop into the foreground because I have two subjects I have basically two points of interest here the one in the foreground the one right to the behind it and that's kind of splitting my attention a little bit so not a little bit it is splitting my attention so maybe just try that just do that again in your post processing what we've been talking about you can mask the subject the main bird and blur out and maybe bring the exposure down for the other one see what happens with that and again if you're processing i'm not sure what software you're using for your black and white conversion, but I do recommend Silver FX Pro. It'll help you get a stronger dynamic range on, and that would be something you want to test out. Well, good, you guys. Always good to see your work. Thank you for submitting your photographs. Please keep, you know, interacting with each other in AYP Club. I love seeing that. And, um, what else do we have? Any, you know, we're working on some new new uh, shows coming up. I, I don't have any to announce just yet, but I'm definitely working on a few 
very cool photographers that you'll be hearing from soon. And I'll just remind you guys to, uh, you know, subscribe and like, and leave your comments as always. And it's really important you guys interact with each other. And that's why we have AYP Club. Uh, it's, it's, our, it's our place where we can go and really trust each other and, and leave comments and, you know, take suggestions and try them out. And it's, it's, it's like our, our meeting ground. How did you do that? <laughs> you found that. Jerry, I did. How did you find it? So I have it for okay. the end of the show. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we're coming to the end of the show. So thank you guys for joining us. Do your subscribing and all those things I just mentioned. And uh, also, Jared, do we have any other announcements right now? Um, I don't believe so. Okay. So remember to get out and capture your own images of life. We do not have their, our closing music, but... Hey, look at that. We have all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. And hopefully our software will be working next week, make things a little smoother for us. Until then, we'll see you guys really soon, and we'll see you in AYP Club. Okay? Take care. <laughs>